Today you're going to learn two skills. You're going to, number one, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing sides in a right triangle. And secondly, you're going to use the sides of a triangle, given three sides of a triangle, to determine something about the angles. You'll decide whether the triangle is acute, obtuse, or right. The Pythagorean theorem, which is known universally by this name, so you can refer to it by this name, um, has a really simple hypothesis. It's the simplicity of the hypothesis that makes it so powerful. So it states, in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. So let's sort through these words. The hypothesis of the theorem is that you have a right triangle. It's that simple. And what that yields is the sum of the squares of the legs. So that means square the legs and then add them together and what you get equals the square of the hypotenuse. So I'm going to ask you to state the Pythagorean theorem and I want you to give it just like this. In a right triangle, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, exactly like that. So um, you could say, if you have a right triangle, and if one leg is A, the other leg is B, and the hypotenuse is C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But if all you said was A squared plus B squared equals C squared, that would be incorrect. So let's do two examples. So given a right triangle where we know two of the sides, that's where you'll use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so um, given this triangle, we notice it's a right triangle, so we can say leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, and write this equation. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. While I won't see the work that you'll show on this, maybe I want you to write it down that way. Don't do anything, any other steps um, at the same time. So just write down leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Um, then let's solve this equation. So we'll do the squaring, add, and take the square root. So this is where you're going to use the skill that you learned yesterday, simplifying square roots. So I'm going to think of 45 as nine times five. It's 15 times three, but 15 and three, neither of them are perfect squares. So that's not helpful. So nine times five, Square root of nine, I know. Square root of five, I don't know. And that's the missing side of this right triangle. Okay, let's do another. So the difference between the first example and this example is that on this example, what we don't know happens to be a leg. But it doesn't matter. We're going to write our equation. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared letting the variable be wherever it, um, it shows up in that equation, and then we use the tool of algebra to solve. So this, this triangle would yield leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Then I crunch through the algebra. I'm gonna square these numbers. I'm gonna subtract 144 from both sides and then I take the square root. And this one happened to give me a nice number. Um, if you get a nice number, it's worthwhile to, to notice that, to notice these numbers, because we have a special name for these combinations. So we call these combinations Pythagorean triples. You don't have to memorize this list, but I think it's worthwhile to, um, to notice them when they show up, at least. So um, three, four, five is a Pythagorean triple. It's the simplest of them um, because three squared nine plus 16 equals 25. But if three, four, five yields a right triangle, then 30, 40, 50 would also yield a right triangle or any multiple of those. So notice five, 12, 13, that's the combination that we just came up with in our last example. But if 5, 12, 13 is a right triangle, then so would be 5 times 2, 12 times 2, 13 times 2, 10, 24, 26. Um, in fact, the, the Pythagorean triple that shows up the most often in 
um, in high school work seems to me to be six, eight, ten, because it's not quite as obvious as three, four, five, and yet it's helpful if you recognize it, you can get to your answers more quickly. So what I've just said is that since three, four, five is a right triangle, because three squared plus four squared equals five squared, nine plus 16 equals 25, then um, any multiple of this would also be a Pythagorean triple yielding a right triangle. So I could multiply each of these by three, nine, 12, 15. Those numbers yield a right triangle. I'm going to ask you why we would know that. Just why, if we know this gives us a right triangle, do we also know this gives us a right triangle? I'm going to ask that question in the Zoom session. So I've really already used this idea, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. We can't say um, like squared plus like squared equals hypotenuse squared because if we don't know what's a right triangle to begin with, we wouldn't use those terms. So we would say if, side squared plus side squared equals the longest side squared, then it's a right triangle. We're actually going to be able to extend this to not only given three sides know whether we have a right triangle, but whether or not we have an acute or an obtuse or a right triangle. So given the sides, we're going to be able to know something about the angles. So we're going, we are going to use A, B, and C for the lengths of the sides of the right triangle. And it's important in all of these relationships that C is the longest side. So first of all, this is really just the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. I've very intentionally put C squared on the left side, even though it's a little counterintuitive. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So basically this says, if uh, the lengths of the sides of a triangle satisfy this relationship, like, like squared plus like squared equals hypotenuse squared, or side squared plus side squared equals longest side squared, then it's a right triangle. Well, what if C squared weren't big enough to make it a right triangle? Or actually on this, I've written this here first, what if it's too big? C squared is too big for it to be a right triangle. So if C squared is a certain length, it makes it a right triangle. If it's bigger than that, and C is the longest side, then the triangle would be obtuse. And you probably can guess then, what if c squared were smaller than a squared plus b squared? Then it would be an acute triangle. Your text gives both of these last two relationships in one theorem. So why I've put the c squared on the left side is because it makes this a little bit more intuitive that if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, we get obtuse. If c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, we get acute. If you write these in a different order, then it's a little bit harder to remember. So we'll do three examples, four examples, where, where we're given the sides of a triangle and we try to decide whether it's acute, obtuse, or right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna want to compare c squared Remember when in elementary you put a little box like that and you were supposed to put the comparison symbols in there equals greater than or equal to, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna compare C squared to A squared plus B squared. If we put the biggest side on the left, then this becomes quite intuitive. If it's equal, it's right. If C squared is greater, greater than A squared plus B squared, then it's obtuse, and if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, it's acute. So let's do it. We're gonna do four examples. So um, the first one, we have a triangle with sides of length three, seven, and five. We're given information about the sides. We wanna know, is it acute, obtuse, or right? You already know something about these angles. We know that the largest angle is opposite the long, the biggest side, seven. So what we're gonna do is write um, seven squared, biggest side squared first, compared to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Seven squared compares to three squared plus five squared, half. We square everything, 
do the addition. 9 plus 25 is 34. And then think about the comparison. So since this biggest side is bigger than what it would need to be to make it right, it opens up that triangle. And this triangle is obtuse. It's pretty powerful to know um, the sides of the triangle and from that be able to figure out what kind of triangle it is. Let's do another one. So given the sides of a triangle to be six, five, and four, let's decide if the triangle is acute, obtuse, or right. So we write the biggest side squared first compared to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. That order doesn't matter. Okay, I square everything. Do the addition and then the comparison. So if um, this third side squared was 41, we'd have a right triangle, but it's not 41, it's less than 41. So we have an acute triangle. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, seven, 10, two. Now I wish I had time to pause here to ask you if, um, if you saw any problems with these numbers. And I think someone would think about this. The size of a triangle cannot be seven, 10, and two. This goes back to something that we did before, that any two sides of a triangle have to be greater than the third side. This is called the triangle inequality theorem. You can find this in your notes. So if we had a side of length 10 and a side of length seven and a side of length two, those two shorter sides wouldn't reach. So this, the answer here is actually that there's no triangle. I didn't even check this relationship. Now, had I checked this relationship, what it would yield would be what would look like obtuse, because not only is that biggest side bigger than what would make it a right triangle, it's actually bigger than what would make it a triangle at all. So um, if you maybe forget to think about this from the beginning, so with this one, for example, I would maybe the very first thing notice, six plus four is 10, it reaches across five, okay? so any side has to be greater than the other two sides. Now that's not this, not, it's not the same as this, okay? Um, but it basically says C is greater than A plus B, not the same as this. So um, that has to be true, regardless of whether the triangle is acute, obtuse, or right. So let's say we forget to check that here and we do this correctly and we get acute, we know it does have to be a triangle. It's only if we got obtuse, that maybe it isn't a triangle, but it would be worthwhile to think about it from the very beginning. Do we have a triangle or not? Let's do one more problem and um, I chose it because the numbers are a little bit more complicated. So we have a triangle with sides five, 10, and five times the square root of three. And the question is, is it right, acute obtuse or right? Well, first we want to decide, do we even have a triangle? This is tricky because um, we don't know easily the magnitude of this without thinking about it a bit. So square root of three is between the square root of one and the square root of four. So square root of three is one point something, okay? Square root of three is one point something then this is five times one point something. It's less than five times two. So this is less than 10. You also could um, just punch this in your calculator and find that it's around 8.3. Okay, so what's important about that is that this is the biggest side of the triangle. So this is what we've called C in our relationship where we compare c squared to a squared plus b squared. Okay, so let's do it. I'm gonna put c and put 10 here for c because it's the biggest side. I want to compare that to five squared plus five times the square root of three 
squared. This is our new tricky point. So um, let's talk about how to square five times the square root of three. So five times, I'm gonna write out some steps and then it would be better if you could do this without writing all of these steps. So five times the square root of three squared means five times the square root of three times five times the square root of three. We can rearrange that because it's all multiplication. Five times five times square root of three times square root of three. Five times five is 25. Square root of three times square root of three is three. So this is 75. Now the way to think about that, write it right here. The way to think about that more quickly is from this beginning, five squared is 25. Square root of three squared is three. 25 times three is 75. Okay, so let's go back to our comparison and let's square all of these numbers. We get 100 compares to 25 plus, here we have to go through what we've just done, square the five, we get 25, square the square root of three, we get three. So this entire value is 25 times three or 75. 100 compares to 100, how? They're equal, this is a right, triangle. The converse, basically it satisfies the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So we've learned two things today. First of all, given the sides of a, given two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third using the Pythagorean theorem. And then also given three sides of a triangle, first of all, think about whether it can actually be a triangle or not. And then you can use um, theorems related to the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to decide more specifically whether it's acute, right, or obtuse. Do well.